What's up everyone, welcome to Rex Engine. I wanted to take a few minutes away from playing Dragon Quest XI to make this video on how to extend Rex Engine. So if you're into doing your own code, or you want to build on top of Rex Engine as a foundation, this is the video to get you into that. So something I don't go into too often in a lot of these videos is that Rex Engine is actually built from the ground up to be easy to extend. And to that end, there's a bunch of abstract classes that everything in Rex Engine is built on top of that you can also build things on top of. So I've opened up a couple of those here just as samples to show you guys. Um, Rex Actor, which we've got open here, is the base building block for every type of character in Rex Engine, whether it's the player, whether it's an NPC, whether it's an enemy. All of those are going to extend Rex Actor. Rex state is basically an ability. So uh, it's not an attack, but it's like a jump, um, a dash, a wall clinging, um, ledge grabbing, um, gliding, all of those things extend Rex state. Um, an attack is an attack. There's not much more to say about that. Um, this can include melee attacks or projectile attacks. And speaking of projectiles, the projectile class itself can also be extended. And finally, I've got Power Up open here. Um, and so Power Up could be things like energy restoring, um, extra lives, temporary invincibility, things like that. And all of those can extend the Power Up class. So for this particular video, I'm going to pay special attention to extending the Rex Actor class. So Rex Actor has a ton of convenience functions that you can override if you would like to. Um, the first batch of those is here in the public virtual methods. And those include things like on state changed. Um, this is for any time the actor enters a new state. So for example, if they jump, they're entering the jumping state. Or if they start climbing, they're entering the climbing state. Uh, when they land again on the ground, they're entering the landing state. And so on state changed, when it's called, gets the name of the state passed into it. And so you can actually tell what state they're entering. And so using this, you can have special effects happen whenever, um, whenever they enter a new state. So for example, if, um, if when they're jumping, you want it to play a particle effect, like you've got the wind blowing out behind them or something, um, you can do on state changed. And then you can just query and say, hey, is the state they're entering, is the name of that state jumping? And then, if so, play this particle effect. Um, on state entered and on state exited are very similar to on state changed, except those are specific to when the state starts and when the state ends. So, if you're looking to do something explicitly when the jump begins, you could do on state entered. Or when the jump ends, you could do on state exited. On damaged other actor is if, so this is your player character, for example, if you attack an enemy, you would, this would call on damaged other actor. So you would know that your player is doing the damage and the other actor here is the actor being damaged. And this is the amount of damage being done. Uh, notify of controller jumping is actually, it's a convenience function that's made explicitly for jumping. And the number of jumps that you've done in succession since, since touching the ground gets passed into that. Um, so for example, if you've got a double jump, then jump number will be two. Triple jump, it'll be three. Um, so you can use that for playing things like different effects when you're doing multiple jumps. Uh, reset is usually called when the actor dies. And moving further along, um, toward the very bottom here, we also have several protected virtual methods that you can override. We have on death, you can call this um, when the actor dies. On revive is if they come back to life after dying. Um, on controller changed is if they have multiple Rex controllers. So for example, um, the swimming system uses different Rex controllers where the character has one controller which gives them a set of abilities on land and then a different controller to change up their animations and their physics and their abilities when they're in the water. So you can call this, and this gives you a reference to both the new controller and the previous controller. So you'll know, for example, if they're starting to swim or, or if they're going on land or if they're starting to fly or 
anything else. Um, on enter water and on exit water are just for water. And finally, the one that we're going to actually be using today for an example is on hit. So this is just if they take damage. And it'll tell you how much damage they took. And it also passes in the collider of whatever did the damage to them. So switching out of mono develop and going back into Unity, um, I'm going to try making a new enemy class, which is going to override uh, Rex Actor. So to do that, um, first I'm just going to make a new script. I'm just going to put it here in my demo folder. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it Tricerabot, because we have these Tricerabot enemies that walk around in the demo, but they never have their own class. So I'm going to open this script up in Mono Develop. I'm going to make sure that I am using Rex Engine. And I'm actually going to extend the enemy class, um, which itself is an extension of Rex Actor, with just a couple of other convenience functions thrown in. So if we go back to Rex Actor, the thing that we want to extend here is protected virtual void on hit. So I'm going to gut everything else here, and I'm going to put in on hit. And I'm going to cut out virtual and make that override. Um, so I want to do something really silly for this demo, because I think it's just more fun that way. Um, I'm going to make it so every time this enemy gets hit, their sprite is going to blow up a little bit. By which I mean get larger, not like Michael Bay blow up. OK, so this guy's going to get 1.1 times larger every time he takes damage. OK, so now I want to make a new enemy with this new script attached. And fortunately, Rex Engine gives us a really, really easy way to do that. If we open up the Rex Palette window, uh, which if you don't have it open, it's under Window, Rex Engine, Rex Palette. I'm going to expand the From Template field here. And this gives us a few options. We can either create a new enemy or a new player directly from the enemy or the player template. Or, this is a new feature, we can create one from the template, but also using any script that we want to. So if I click on New Enemy from Script, we just made this Tricerabot script. And I want to make an enemy using that script as, as its Rex actor. So I'm just going to type in Tricerabot into the field here. And I'm going to hit the New Enemy from Script button. And so this pops up this new enemy here. Um, this is mostly just using the generic enemy template. Oops. Um, except if we scroll down in its inspector, we can see that instead of having an enemy script, it actually has the Tricerabot script that we created. Um, so I'm not going to change too much on this guy. I'm just going to leave him pretty much as he comes out of the box. And what we should be finding is that when we hit this guy, his local scale should be getting multiplied by 1.1. So it looks like it's working. Um, I want to give this guy a little bit more health, actually, so we can really see that start to blow up. Let's give this guy 10 hit points. Yeah, so every hit, this guy gets a little bit bigger. This is funny, this is so goofy and so stupid, but like, I kind of like it. I kind of want to do something like a new demo that involves that. But at any rate, so that's it. So any of these virtual methods here can be overridden. Um, and if you guys feel like coming through the code, the whole thing is open source. And there's lots more stuff here. And it's all designed 
explicitly for you guys to take advantage of and to do cool stuff with if you're so inclined. And as always, if you're not so inclined, don't worry. You also don't need to do any code. This is only if this is something you feel like doing. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll talk to you guys next time.